Over the weekend, reports went out that singer Kelly Price was missing, but it was later reported that she wasn't missing and was just recovering in private from COVID-19. Well, things escalated when singer Nikki Gilbert, a member from the hit 90s group Brownstone, went live on her IG detailing a conversation she had with Kelly Price. Later, rapper DeBrat clapped back on her IG live condemning and accusing Nikki of clout chasing. Now, we know... We just wanted to get to the bottom of this because we love all these sisters. So we've invited Nikki to join us today. Welcome to the show, Nikki. Welcome. Hey, Nikki. ladies. Hi. Hi. Girl, this weekend it was hot. What, what happened? Can you explain your, your truth? Yes, my truth. My truth and only my truth. So um, Brownstone was asked to fill in for Kelly for a few dates. Um, we filled in for those dates. I thought this was wonderful. Like everyone else, I heard that Kelly had been diagnosed with COVID via her Instagram. So, of course, I reached out to my girl, like, hey, sis, you good? Like, you know, we're doing these dates. Thank you. Even included a tribute to Kelly in the dates. And I never heard anything back. Then we got more calls for dates after a few weeks had passed. So I innocently reached out to her daughter, who I know, like, hey, sweetheart, just checking on you, checking on mom. Is everything okay? Her daughter, Nia, said, Miss Nikki, I need to talk to you. It is private. It is important. Um, I need this to remain private. So, of course, you know, sisters in the industry's daughter is concerned. I reached out to Nia. She shared um, a lot of information with me that, you know, caused alarm for me as someone who loves Kelly and is, who was who her friend. And um, unfortunately, her daughter just didn't know what to do. She didn't know where to turn. She felt like there weren't a lot of people that she could trust. She knew that my organization did advocacy for missing women and girls. She knew that her mother and I had a great relationship. So I referred her to some resources to privately check on her mother, which she did. Vicki, how long had it been since she had heard from her mother? Kelly. The last, uh, uh, what she told me was that the last time she saw her mother was when she was in ICU um, and she was on a ventilator and then the hospital went into lockdown. They hadn't heard anything else since then. And that was probably oh, wow. six weeks ago. So at that point, you gave her the resources. I gave her the resources. The resources went, um, checked, uh, did a welfare check. Her daughter issued that welfare check as next of kin. Um, they did say that there were some packages outside the door. They were a little concerned. However, the family would have to issue a missing persons report. The daughter said, I'm not quite ready to do that. Let me give it some more time. I said, sweetheart, here's my number. Call me if you need anything else. So weeks have passed. We played a show in Detroit. Her daughter called me again. Miss Nikki, I don't know what to do. My mom is missing. Now my aunt has issued a welfare check. That happened last Saturday. Um, she said they were out there for about three hours. The police did talk to someone. Um, I'm not going to disclose that. It's not my place. And explained, if we don't see Kelly Price or hear from Kelly Price, unfortunately, we'll have to add her to our missing persons wow. list. Um, no, there was no response. And then I think she was added to the list on Monday. And then, then at that point, the sister called me in tears. I believe her family was genuinely concerned about her, not getting into the family dynamics, but I truly believe they were concerned and said, please advocate. Nobody else is helping us. She's on the missing persons list. We need to amplify this message. We know this is what you do. Please help us. Nikki, and I just I... want to clarify. When she got out of the hospital, did she go to mm -hmm. a house that they knew about or she would just left? They they didn't couldn't... Know nobody anything. knows what happened. Nobody, 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 nobody knows what happened. Okay. All right. Got and it. What is Kelly saying about this as of today? Like, yeah. what has she spoken up about this at all? So um, after, you know, we, we, we spoke up and, 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 and tried to draw attention to this, which is a very serious issue, obviously, as we all know, um, Kelly and I spoke. I am the friend that keeps it all the way real with you. No pun intended. I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> and I let her know um, that I was really concerned about the fact that no one heard from her. Her children hadn't heard from her. She was very um, clear about the issues that she had in her family, which I understand and won't get into. But my question was, could you have made a phone call to anybody? Right. Mm. The police, your daughter, you know, anybody. Yeah. Because yeah. I was very reluctant to get involved in this because when I spoke up in the Whitney Houston scenario, it turned into a whole thing. And her response? And obviously, this has turned into the same thing. What did what Kelly was, say? What was her response? Yeah, when you said, why didn't you um, reach out to clear, someone? She was clear. She, you know, I, I don't want... <laughs> there's a fine line between, you know, keeping your mouth closed on your friendly stuff and, and advocating, which is what I do. Kelly was clear um, of my position on this, which was that I am still going to advocate for missing women and girls. You were a part of that conversation with the Wayne County Sheriff, 
before we knew you weren't missing. And I'm going to continue that conversation. So did Kelly give you permission to publicly say you talked to her? Um, she didn't have to give me permission. I told her that I was going to be clear that I've spoken to her and she's okay. And I'm doing that because I am a real advocate for women and girls. Too often, you know, people dismiss mm. uh, missing women and girls for this very reason. And it was important and she was clear and she agreed to advocate with me at the end of our call. She apologized for all of the confusion and was saying, let's schedule lunch when I feel better. Okay, so obviously that now leads us to this other part of the story, which is where one of her really good friends, the brat, felt that you were wrong in speaking out for her. So first things first is, why do you think she felt that way? And what is your relationship with the brat? Um, brat and I go way back. I'm a brat fan, flat out, and still gonna be a brat fan and wish her and Judy the best. I think it's a beautiful thing that they're getting married. I honestly believe that the brat was advocating for her friend. I was advocating for my friend. Kelly is my friend. We've had dinner together. We've cried together. She, up until this point, you know. Um, and I think the brat was advocating. I was advocating. And maybe the two of us just had a little bit of misinformation. I think that okay. if she had all the facts and knew that this was something I've been kind of dealing with and holding yeah. for about a month, she wouldn't have done that. And I would like to believe that it's all a misunderstanding. The brat is saying that you were clout chasing because you wanted to put it on your <laughs> podcast. What do you say about that? I, I, I say that that is partially true. I wanted to put it on my podcast for sure. I wanted to use this as an opportunity to bring awareness to missing women and girls because it's a very serious issue. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I did not say anything about Kelly until she was added to the national missing persons list. And I did that because I felt like it was more important for me to put my ego aside and what people would say about me aside and make sure that because her family, her friends, and several other very close friends and associates of Kelly in this industry were all very concerned to the point of tears. Yeah. That I spoke How do you get permission from somebody who is missing? Right. I, I guess she, I guess Kelly felt like she could call certain other people and I respect that. I wish that she had called her family or me or some of the other people that we all mutually know that were actively, I was, we were, I was three-way calling her with people we were trying to reach right. her. Maybe right. she won't answer for you, maybe she'll answer for you. So we uh, tried very, very hard to reach her before we got involved. So Nikki, seeing how this kind of spiraled into like a whole bigger conversation of he say, she say, and pointing fingers, would you have done anything differently looking back now? Absolutely not. I feel like I did everything. And I had, like I said, Sheriff, Sheriff Raphael Washington from Detroit um, on, and I said, hey, sir, tell me, did I overreact? And he said, no, that is the problem. Most people fear that they will be judged for speaking up and advocating for missing women and girls. Mm, okay. And I've got tough skin, I'm a big girl. I wish that before the black brat put that out to her millions of followers, um, that she had just reached out to me because I think it's dangerous when we start to tell people that they're clout chasing and they're really caring and loving on people and hoping for the best. So this is an issue that's obviously very close to your heart. Please tell us about your foundation for missing girls. Yes, y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. From the bottom of foundation.org. We're a very small organization, but we've been around for a few years. We have been advocating for women and girls in the space of being missing, mental health and wellness. Um, I did see this as an opportunity to amplify the conversation. I absolutely did use this as an opportunity to bring an audience to pay attention to the real missing women so I could share the gossip at the end that they were waiting for. Um, I don't regret it. Okay. I would do it again. Okay. I would never wow. allow this to change that. Well, Nikki, I can tell you one thing. You're looking good while you're doing it, too. Yeah. All Thank right. you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the rail, y'all. I'm on the rail. <laughs> now, before we go to break, I also want to mention that we have reached out to the Brat for comment, so we'll keep you guys posted. Brat, you know you're always welcome. Nikki, thank you again.